This week on Fly Rod Chronicles, we're still in the birthplace of fly fishing, the UK. You know, we couldn't fit all the action in one episode, so we had to make a part two. We're going to learn a little more about the history of fly fishing and, of course, catch a ton of fish. You're not going to want to miss this one. Traveling the world, fishing, enjoying the great outdoors. Those are things that would have seemed impossible to me when I was a kid growing up in the mountains of West Virginia. I'm a lucky man and I never want to forget it and I'm hoping that sharing my experiences with folks will inspire them to do the same. I'm Curtis Fleming and these are my Fly Rod Chronicles. Last week, we got to meet up with our good friend William at Famous Fishing over here in England. This is part two. We're fishing the birthplace of fly fishing. Okay. Oh, look over there. Okay. I need to get over there, don't I? Yeah, it's, um, Let me see what I can do. Right. Oh, there he is, there he is, nice, <laughs> nice. That was nice. Kirsten, he don't know he's hooked yet. He will here in about two seconds. <coughs> he's gonna come fly it out of the water. Yep, now he knows he's hooked. Now he knows. Little head shaker. This is way to get him to you. I'm stuck. See if I go straight up, I'm around trees. And he goes right to you. Yes! Sweet, sweet, sweet. It is a gorgeous fish. Once that fish latched onto the fly and the bend of the rod, and to know that you've had many months and months of preparation and, and travel and all it takes to get from the United States over to England, it's something that goes through you like a game-winning free throw. It's, it's just, the rush is absolutely exhilarating. Good. That was on his back. Here he comes. Right. Yes. Nice job. He's got him. <laughs> well done, Rick. Thank you. Nice. Better fish. Bigger nice. one. Yeah. Nicer fish. There you go. <laughs> He's shooting upstream. Yep. Okay. Try to keep him under control so he doesn't uh, terrorize all the others. I know. That's a better fish. Mm-hmm. Okay, just take your time with him. As long as you can keep him in the middle of the stream, uh, you, he, he's not going anywhere. Right. You're playing him like a tarpon. <laughs> <laughs> right. It's a rainbow. Is it? Oh. Yeah, I think that's the first rainbow we've had this trip. Oh. Okay. Nice. Pulling him out. Very nice. Pull him out. Nearly there. Nearly there. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's it. Let's get it. yeah, we got him. Look at this fish. All right. There we go. Rainbow. Yeah. Different color.
So William, tell me a little bit about, you know, acquiring fishing here, because it's, I mean, you can't just come to England and say, I'm packing my fly rod and I'm gonna go fish. It's not public fishing. No, it's not like uh, New Zealand or somewhere where you just buy a, you know, you buy a state license and you go and fish anywhere. All these chalk stream beats are private. There isn't mm -hmm. any public water at all. Mm -hmm. um, and they're divided up into beats. So a beat is a section of water, which may be anything from 500 yards to maybe a mile and a half of mm -hmm. water. You, When you buy a beat for the day, you obviously pay for a beat, you pay for a guide. Uh, you have that to yourself. You don't expect to see anybody else on that on the riverbank mm -hmm. while you're fishing it. It's yours and it's private. Um, and so it's a it, it's um, it's always been like that, and it right. kind of gives a an exclusive feel to the whole sure. thing. Yeah. Uh, okay. Bring it behind me. And there we go. Try, try putting it way further above this one, right in not to be surprised. Trouble's going to hit me. Wait a minute. He could, the first time he came all the way out. Right, right, right. There we go. <laughs> wait, wait, it is, oh, there he is. Grayling, there he, grayling. I've got a grayling. Big grayling. Big grayling. A big grayling. That's a good grayling. Oh. Okay, I'm gonna try to keep him downstream. Do you mind? Yep. Got my first grayling in England. Now, where would you like me to land him? You've got to find a place to drag him around the weed, so. Uh, wow, that's a good grayling. Oh, look at the purple. Yes! Grayling in England! Huh? That is a nice one. Look at the orange on this guy. You got a big brown, huh? Well done. Thank you, thank you. Ch change of a fly. But that, you know, that lift is what gets them. Yep. It, you're taking it away from them. Yep. Change of a fly and a little consistency. And I got five more casts left. <laughs> <laughs> All right, where do we want to put the net on this guy? Well, Maybe right here. Fish. Great fish. Wow. Take them to go under that. Look at these big ones. He's, He's good. a big fish. He is a good fish. You might make some TV out there, Christian. spots on that guy. People out there want to find you. What's the best way? Well, I guess through the web. Um, yep. Google famous fishing and you'll find me. That's uh, the easiest way. We have a website um, and uh, there's contact details. The best thing to do is to send me an email yep. and then uh, we can talk on the phone and sure. fix up you know, exactly what you're looking for. Coming over to England and meeting William 
was amazing. Um, I haven't been over here and to be able to fish some of these holy rivers and and you know rivers that's got you know just so much history. Um, William made that fun. You can tell a good guide when a guide is out there and he is enthusiastic about you catching a fish. That's what you get with William. But you also get the part of William wants you to learn something from him, to take something away from the trip. And that's what separates a good guide from a regular guide. Uh, but the test is forever associated with um, Frederick M. Halford. Um, he was born in the 1830s, he died in 1914, and his two most important books uh, were published in 1886 and 1889. Uh, the first one was uh, Floating Flies and How to Dress Them, which was really about, it's a fly tying book, mm -hmm. followed in 1889 by this book, uh, Dry Fly Fishing in Theory and Practice. Yeah. And this book is the one that changed the whole future of dry fly fishing. Mm -hmm. Rick, if you want to know about how to fish the dry fly, everything you need to know is in this book. Now, he had a mentor, Halford. He wasn't a great fisherman himself. If you look in his angling diaries, you'll see he didn't catch many fish himself. But he had a friend, George Selwyn Marriott, the greatest yeah. dry fly fisherman ever born. You'll see inside, it always says inside, here it says, uh, dry fly fishing in theory and practice by Frederick M. Halford. And down here, it says, in memoriam, George Selwyn Marriott. Mm -hmm. So he's acknowledging, a lot of people say, this book wasn't written by Halford, it was written by Marriott. So some people, the history may sound boring, but if you say you wouldn't be doing what you love doing unless the history had happened, right? there you go. Yeah, yep. yeah, yeah. Well, we thank you. Well, very thank, much. thank you. Yeah, very very much. It's been a pleasure. Hey, I don't see the fly. Does anybody see? Yeah. I love it. Absolutely love it. <laughs> Dry fly fishing, baby. Nice. <laughs> William, you're the man. It's a gorgeous fish. Absolutely stunning, gorgeous. Woo! And wow. Look what he's trying to do to me. Fresh fish. Yeah. He, he. He's like, how dare you to disgrace me like that? Oh my gosh, we just freaking. He said, nope. Nope. Get him, will you? Oh, there he goes. Hold on. I'm gonna pull him up. And I'm gonna oh. It ain't over, is it? He's coming right at you. Oh man! What? <laughs> you gotta be kidding me! You gotta be kidding me! I'm sinking! <gasps> that was good. Oh my gosh! Another big one, look at that. That is a beast. Let me see this guy. <laughs> Did anybody see my fly? <laughs> yeah. Is that what I said? Yeah. <laughs> I gotta show him off to Christian. This might be the widest fish that we've caught here. Yeah, has anybody seen my fly? No, because he's eating it right now. Look at this guy. Look how wide that fish is. It's time for Trout Unlimited Release of the Week.
It's a very easy thing to do to book a trip with Famous Fishing. All you have to do is contact us through the website or by email and uh, we can then get back in touch with you and discuss on the phone usually exactly what your requirements are and uh, how long a trip you want to do, whether you want to fish big rivers, small rivers, whether you want to be focused on the river test and its tributaries, or to fish a variety of other chalk streams. These are very specific rivers that all fall within a 50 mile radius of Stockbridge, so it's easy to reach any of them. During a week long trip, you can fish many, many of them. So uh, it's, it's something we've been doing for a long time. We like to think we're pretty good at it. We look after you well, we've got fantastic guides, um, and uh, we, we use the best equipment. We use sage rods, hardy reels. We can loan you all the kit if you need it. Uh, we can provide your lunches if you want, anything, anything to, to meet your requirements. You know, we caught fish every day. I mean, William put us in positions to catch fish every day, all day long. Um, I can't tell you personally at points the frustration on my level of not performing and catching a fish and getting so upset with myself. But William it would be like, no, no, no. We got many more fish to catch. And you know, this one special place that we went to in Bossington on the River Test, um, you know, he, he, he built that up for us. He said, you know, President George H. Bush, President Jimmy Carter, Johnny Morris of Bass Pro Shop. He went through the other English dignitaries, stood on these banks, and as I got there, the buildup of knowing that, you know, I had a chance to catch a really big fish. I didn't realize how big, though, until I hooked into this fish. And then I, I, I felt the head shake, and I could tell that it was really big. It's IGFA Catch of the Week. And it's dropped right back. That's where it's gone. Uh, let me... So if you can get it way up in front of him, you can okay. let it sink and then lift it in front of his face, okay? okay. Let's right. do it faster. Get it in front of him. Okay, that's good. Okay. Strip it a little. Strip, 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 strip. Nope, strike! There he is. Oh, he's a tank, isn't he? He is a tank. We got him. He is a tank. Good fish? Okay, would you go to the reel in this situation here? Well, not necessarily, if you, if you, if you dare. The thing is, if he runs suddenly. Okay. He, he is shaking me. Nice fit. He's coming up. I think so too. Oh, and you had to say that, didn't you? <laughs> okay. Keep him out of that weed, that's what you want to keep him out of. If he goes into the weed, pull him downstream. Just drop the rod to the right and pull him downstream. That's nice. Steady prep. He is a tank. An absolute tank. He is pissed. <laughs> he is mad. Jeez. I mean, I gotta go with him, right? Yeah, yeah, just, just keep, keep the pressure on him. That's good. Nice. Okay, just take it easy, take it easy. Okay, he's over here in the brush. Take it easy. He's yeah. in the brush. Pull him out. Where's okay. he now? Almost got him. He's bringing him here. Oh my goodness, look at that! Look at this Fleming! <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Oh my goodness. My goodness. Look at that fish. Oh, that's a big one. That's a beast. Look at that. Oh. That's a beast. You know, my uncle said once, you cherish your fly fishing friends because you have them forever. William is a new friend and just showed us an incredible time with all these sacred rivers in England. Rick's 
been a great friend for many years. And to be sitting and standing on waters where some serious dignitaries and, and presidents and, and all the people that's come here to fish, um, I'm beside myself. You know, I caught my big fish tonight. Um, we've caught unbelievable fish all week. Um, I don't know how we top this, but uh, as I say every week, come back for more Fly Rod Chronicles after this.